In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up the US Cutter Edition of Vinyl Master Cut. Now before I go right into setup, what I do want to explain to you is where to find help and how you can access more information about the software at any time that it suits you. I find one of the biggest problems with software or new software is that it feels like everything is hidden away from you and you really can't find much and you kind of stumble through it. So let me just help you quickly understand where you can get help. If you come up to the help menu up here and click on help topics, you'll find the help manual comes up. Now in this manual, there's hundreds of pages covering many, many topics. And this is like an outline of them here. What you will find is this how to's and tutorials pages. If I go to how to's, obviously we're watching this lesson here, set up your software, but you'll see here, you've got set up your cutter, at your first job, how to install fonts, how to vectorize, cut complex artwork, etc. And under tutorials, there's plenty more. And actually, what I strongly encourage you to do is watch this lesson here, working with Vinyl Master Cut. This really does go to a lot of detail about the layout of the program and where to find things. The other thing here is the keyword search. So if I'm looking for something about text, I can type that in, and you'll see here I've got like text box and texture and text wrap. There's all these different subjects you can learn about. What's important to know uh, is that this information here is available anytime you want it by simply clicking on the help menu, help topics, and the help manual comes up. So don't forget to go here when you get stuck. You simply just click on these purple help books and click on these links and they just go through heaps of information. Just please note that this manual does cover every level of the software. So here we've got things like brush and smooth and uh, well polyline's actually in Vinyl Master Cut so is curve and freehand but smooth and brush is not available in Vinyl Master Cut and that's in the higher levels of the software. So just be wary that the although the manual does cover everything in Vinyl Master Cut it also covers a lot of other topics for other levels of the software and Vinyl Master Cut is the basic level. So that's where you get the help from. Now when you first load the program up, you'll be presented with this window, the gateway, and no doubt you'll land on this page. And here you've got set up your software, which is the lesson we're watching now. Um, and again, if you click on these links here, they'll bring up the manual. There's a set up your cutter section there that you can watch and how to assemble your cutter, the physical way of doing it, and also the software way of doing it. And if you're interested in upgrading, you can have a look at that. Now, this page that comes up, if you uncheck this, it'll no longer come up when you run the gateway. Instead, when you first run the program or the gateway, you'll see this uh, page will come up. And this is these are your recent documents. Now, obviously, we've put in some documents for you to get started, and over time, this will uh, fill up with all the documents you've created. From this page, I can create a new document or I can open a document. I'll come back to that. The next thing that you can do as far as setup is concerned is click on the Settings tab here. And this is where we can set up these popular type settings. You may prefer to work in metric, you may prefer to work imperial, you may rather not have a page border uh, to see the rulers, to when you resize proportionally, um, and you can also set your default page size at the moment it's set to letter. You could set that to A4 if you wanted to, um, A3, a sign blank, you know, a poster size, whatever you want. Now if you want to get into the advanced uh, settings, you click on this button here, and the advanced settings come up. Now if I click on these nodes here, they expand out and you can see things like editing. So default units, you can set any number of default units that you want to work in. Now when you set anything in this module and click accept, it actually applies it to the entire program permanently. Well I say permanently, you can come back and obviously change it and resave it and then it will update it to that stage. But every time you open the program, anything that you've put in here and you've clicked accept will remain fixed until you change it later. So there are a lot of um, options in here as you can see and you can just expand these out and set the settings the way you want them to be for whenever you open the program. So you can really tailor it to suit the way you like to work. So it's important to know where that is. So again, that's the advanced button here and if I close out of the program I can get to it from here and I can also get it to the, from the tools menu settings there. So there's several ways of getting to that window. Now going back to the gateway, the other thing you'll need to do is activate the software if you haven't already done it. Now when you uh, first run the program it will um, you know, prompt you to activate it and you should activate it 
uh, and make sure you use the correct email address when you do that so that we can contact you if it's necessary. You can always deactivate here and then activate another computer. So if you want to move the software to another computer, simply deactivate it and install and activate the new computer. That's all you have to do. If you need some help and you're getting stuck, you can click on the support link here and you can go to customer service. You can click on the help topics, which is the manual that I brought up before. You can contact tech support and you can see more training videos. So that's where you can get additional help from. So going back to these documents, as I said before, you can create a new document by simply clicking that and it will create it at the default size. As I said, it was letter. And you can see here, you can set all the sizes here. That's in that, that section there. And there's also a section here for pages as well. So that's more advanced tools for pages. The other thing, as I said before, with the gateway, you can open a document. Now at the moment, it's opening it in the samples folder. So when you first run the program, it's gonna work from this location here. Now you might have a different drive letter where you've installed it to, but generally this is where the samples are stored. Most people will create their own directories and save their documents to wherever they like. But once you've saved a folder, like here in this example of samples, whenever I go to open, so if I click here to open, it will always remember this folder. So if I change this and I say save in my documents or I save in another folder, like my client folder or something, the program will remember where you last saved a document and it will go back there. So just remember that. Okay, the other thing from the gateway I'll just remind you of is this getting started. So you can bring this back if you click on that button there. So if you're in documents and you want to get back to that window that we just saw, you just click getting started here and that brings it back up for you. So that pretty much covers the gateway and how to access that and to use the tools and features in there. So I'll just close out of that. So now back in the main program, you'll see there are things like heads up display here. Now that turns the page on and off and sets the grid and brings up the settings module, etc. So you can actually turn these off down the bottom here by clicking on the tools menu and unchecking heads up display. And then when I zoom in and zoom out, they disappear. So we can turn things like that off. Other things we can do is work with the fast hints and turn those off. So when you first run the program, you'll also see this page will, or the design center will come out with this, the learning resources. Again, if you uncheck this, and when you restart the program, you won't see the fast hints pop out like this. So that's important information to know if you don't want to see that anymore. There's some very good links here in case you need those. Um, and the fast hints are actually a very good way of learning the program as well. So for example, I'll draw out a square You'll see the fast sense automatically update to show me information about squares by draw out a circle, same sort of thing. Circle, arrow, you know, you get information about what you've got selected in the right hand side here. But if you don't want to see that coming up all the time, you just uncheck this uh, checkbox here. So I'll just pop that away. Now another part of setup is getting your cutter set up and how do you do that? Well, it's quite simple. Um, there is a lesson on this, but I'll show you where it is now. You click on this button here, the launch module, and you click on vinyl spooler. You can also access it from the file menu, go down the cut plot, vinyl spooler. There's a shortcut there as well. And that brings up the vinyl spooler. Now, nothing's been set up yet. As you can see, if I click on the connection tab, there's nothing in here and it has to be set up. Now, you may have actually uh, installed a cutter driver at installation because you're prompted to set up a make a model of cutter. Now, if you've done that, you'll see it in this drop down. I'll assume you haven't done that yet, so I'll show you how to quickly do that. You click add here and you select a cutter to install. So you might select a Titan and this model here and click install. You can see it's installed that uh, cutter driver there. Now, as I mentioned before, there's an entire lesson on how to set up the cutter, and I recommend you watch that. But that's where you set up your cutter. So I'll close that out. So there are some other settings you can um, set from the menus. Now, I'll just draw out a square just so they all get highlighted. When you have an object selected, all the menu items that are related to that will highlight, as you can see here. So I can set things like the grid. Um, I can turn guides on and off, and dimensions and rulers and those sorts of things here. So some of the settings that you want to set to view, some of the view settings are set in here. So if, for example, I drag out a guide here um, and I don't want to see guides anymore, I can turn that off. And you can see when I zoom in and out, in other words, reset the page, uh, the guides are gone now. But if I bring them back, I can now see the guide. Same with the grid, if I turn that off, it's now off. 
So you can set some of these uh, settings in here. Um, there's one there for font scale. So that's where those settings are. And one final thing I'll show you is the hide reveal tool. So you see this little pop out button here. You can see that reveals more tools. So if I click on a square for example, you can see I've got all these square tools here. If I click this button you can see how it hides them. And I can even do that there. So if you want less tools, you can click on the hide reveal tools. Now as mentioned, there's many, many other lessons um, from the help topics. So I'll just bring those up there. So please go to the how-tos here and watch some of these lessons. I think the most important one at this stage is probably this one, working with the software. Um, that really does cover the general layout of the program and where you'll find most tools and features. Uh, and it's a very worthwhile lesson watching. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Thank you.